Right, uh, as you can see, I have now powdered the chassis. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video is also powder the buffer beams and buffer heads. Now, they don't look um, realistic at the moment, but there's a tip which I'm going to show you after um, you spray it with matte varnish. Now, the matte varnish, um, the can's below me because I'm holding this right up to the light, or otherwise you won't be able to see the powder on it, or, or what I have done to the chassis. Uh, well, the can, it, if I lean over a look, it is... Uh, Humbrol uh, Matte 49 uh, Varnish Spray, it's a spray can, and basically you go into a well ventilated room or outside uh, and basically just give it a quick spray over from I think it is about uh, 3 inches, uh, there'll be a correction on the bottom of the screen if I'm wrong there, uh, but yeah I think it's 3 inches, just give it a quick spray over and that should uh, keep the powder in place, because although it's glued on it might uh, scrape off uh, over time. Uh, but uh, with that matte varnish it stays on there really really good so yeah uh, I'll give it a quick spray of uh, matte varnish obviously I won't show me doing that because it's just basically you know to spray a spray can properly so yeah anyway right uh, I'll go and quickly spray it and then I'll show you what the results after right uh, as you can see I have sprayed the uh, chassis with matte varnish um, now do use this opportunity to add more powder if you need to uh, because obviously being shiny, rigidly being shiny plastic, the glue and uh, powder does not uh, seem to want to stick in certain places first time. I had trouble with this axle box here. So basically I gave it a quick spray of matte varnish all over sort of thing. And then I put some more powder on it and then you can give it another spray of matte varnish. Um, yeah. Now I was wrong in the first video, uh, no not the first video, the uh, first, the clip for this. Um, as um, you don't spray it from 3 inches, you spray it from about, um, well, as it said on the bottom of the screen, uh, 20 to 30 centimetres. I chose to do it at 30 centimetres, and those, these bottles are quite powerful, so yeah, it does go quite far. As you can see, also with the powder added, it, uh, they're not the powder, the spray added, uh, the varnish, sorry, um, it gives, um, it dulls down the uh, rust a bit, making it a more um, metally sort of colour, as you can see here. Um, which is good, it obviously keeps the powders on there and it improves the effect as you'll see uh, when the wagon is totally all put together with all the wheels on. Now um, the next uh, clip will I'll show you how to do the buffers and also um, then the clip after that I'll show you how to um, improve the wheels a bit with the black um, paint like I mentioned in one of the earlier clips. Right, now I'm going to show you how to um, uh, do the realistic effect on the buffers. Basically uh, it's that greasy build up like you see or, or uh, well but you, like you see on locomotives, on preserved railways and carriages and stuff, that uh, black build up in the middle of the buffer head. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. What you need is a 33 um, black. As you can see, uh, there's quite a bit left on the cap sort of thing. So all you just got to do is just dip a cocktail stick in it. Then you get your uh, buffer and you just dab it in the centre. Like, be very careful, I try to get it right in the centre. Like so, there you go. Now what you do, quickly while it's wet, is uh, press down onto tissue with it. And hold it there for a couple of seconds. And like so, it'll leave a splodge. Do it again, make sure there's not too much on there. Right, once you've done that, there's obviously still quite a bit on there. So you get a tissue like so, you press up against it, and just twist it around in a circular motion sort of thing like so like this and then hey presto you probably won't be able to see it on there but I'll show you it when the wagon's complete you've got a nice little uh, dark splodge in the centre of your buffer so yeah now I'm going to show you how to um, make the wheels a bit oily now uh, making the uh, wheels look oily is actually very very simple basically you just do the same like you did with um, the buffers except with a paintbrush you just dab it on the top of the cap and then you really really wipe it out sort of thing wipe out as much uh, paint as possible sort of thing from the uh, from the brush then once you've got it quite dry you just go around the centre of the uh, axle and then you just go lightly around the edge sort of thing as you see there's quite a bit wet on the outside here well well I say as you can see but you probably can't because of the focus on my terrible on this is terrible on this camera if you if so just drag it around with a bit of tissue and it sort of blends in with the brown and gives it a quite of a dirty effect you know dulls down the uh, the otherwise quite bright uh, rusty 
brown, which was uh, number 29 pink, that one, on the uh, what I used on the wheels, as you saw earlier in this video. So, yeah, now i just do it on the other side as well. Basically the same, just go around the uh, centre of the wheel with it. Also, I dab a bit of the axle, the some of the spokes with it. See there, done it again, sort of thing. And then just, uh, just around the outside, sort of thing. It don't really matter. You can put as much as you want in the centre, sort of thing. That's where the, uh, obviously the axle would have gone into the box, and obviously there would have been loads of oil in there to keep it all nice and smooth and running. So yeah, there you go. And basically that's it. Now the only thing to do is uh, basically put the wagon back together, and I'll uh, show you it. Um, well. I'll hold up to the light after this video once it's all put to get put back together so you can see the uh, buffer heads and the wheels right so um right I'll put it back together now and there you have it one uh, weathered slope sided 16 tonner there you can see the uh, buffer effect I was on about and I also um you just about see the oiled up wheels I'm gonna put some photos in at the end um taken in daylight rather than this uh wall light so you can uh, see all the detail much better but now, um, for this wagon, it's going to go back in the box, and I'm going to take it back to Signals Models at Midsummer Norton, where it will go on the shelf, and hopefully be, um, someone will buy it. Now, it's going to be sold for about £12, which is not that bad, considering the amount of hours of work I put into it. You know, Obviously, this video, uh, all the videos combined, only seems like about half an hour, or just over half an hour, but this took quite a few hours and quite a few days waiting for the paint to dry and stuff. But yeah, there you go, sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, twelve pounds is not a bad sort of thing. Obviously, I get a bit of a commission from that sort of thing, which obviously goes towards my next uh, railway purchase sort of thing. And uh, yeah, well, the um, most wagons nowadays are about twelve. No, not twelve pounds. Sorry, they're about uh, nine pounds, ten pounds. So yeah, you're you're getting quite good value for money here. So yeah, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little tutori tutorial. And um, if you are, do live in the local area, sort of thing around Bristol Way, do visit Midsummer Norton Models. Always friendly staff in there. Uh, you know, great prices, and they'll order in. They'll get anything you want in, sort of thing. A brilliant little model shop. And obviously, um, visit there and have a look and see if you can see any of my wagons on the shelf. So yeah, this has been SDJR7F88 speaking, and uh, thanks for watching.